Today's episode of Desertwood Days with Kathy Blaze is sponsored by Movie Group, founder of the Dream Network Channel. Learn more at dreamnetworkchannel.com. I want to visit all the places nobody goes. I want to teach all the things that nobody knows. I want to grow wings, leave the coop, learn to fly. Bungee jump from the tallest building in Dubai. I want to fly around town in my UFO. I want to eat real food, not the GMOs. I want to make moves, call the shots like the boss. I want to love like I never lost. Welcome back to Desert with Days, and I am your host, Kathy Blade. Today, I'd like to welcome our special guest, Ms. Judith Eisenberg. Hello. Hello there. So nice to see you. Good to see you. Don't you look beautiful today? Thank you. I think I'm dropping pillows back here again. My beautiful purple pillow. Oh, uh, so regal. <laughs> so how have you been? I've been good. Good, good, good what to hear. hear. Good to hear. So, Judith, you're an actress. Yes. And how long have you been in the acting industry? Well, I've been in the acting industry about 20 years. Wow. I really am a retired high school teacher. Oh. I taught social studies. And while I was doing that, I decided what is my passion when I was a young girl. Uh -huh. And so I thought I've always wanted to go into acting. So I started taking acting classes in town at the Verve okay. with Amanda. Yes, we had her here last season. Oh, she's lovely. Yes, she is. And then I took classes at the Arizona Acting Academy. And then I got so into it that I went over to LA and I studied at the Groundlings and with some other teachers there. Wonderful, Wonder I love that you're <laughs> acknowledging right. the show and how much um, training oh, yeah. you got in there. Because you Lots know, a lot of, of training. Time, a lot of times people don't think about that piece of it, that right. training is a big part of being an actress. It I mean, is, and then you end up, at the end of the day with acting, is really you learn to let go. Yes. And, and that's the big thing. So it's hard, so hard in the beginning because you're thinking and thinking, how do I do it right? How do I do it right? Right. And then through all these acting classes and workshops and the groundlings and improv and you learn to let go. That's true. And I've even taken classes where you turn into an animal in LA. <laughs> in workshops, I was a hawk. <laughs> And, 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 and you're right in letting it go because a lot of times we're still stuck up in our head. Right. So that was my discovery through it. Wow. So you, you said that you want to be an actress when you were younger. What was it that inspired that? Um, my mother would get me involved in community theater at the time, so I started out as Mrs. Mouse and Peter Rabbit, and I graduated to um, Elves and the Shoemaker. I was the lead elf. That was really exciting. So, um, and then uh, I just stopped doing it. Just stopped doing it? I just stopped doing it. Life took over and you stopped Life doing it? Life just got really difficult, and so I stopped doing it. So and I went back to something that gave me a lot of joy. Right, and that happens with a lot of us. It does. Is that it life does. takes over, and, and like I like to say, we stop being a kid, we become mm -hmm. an adult, and we forget about all those fun things we used to enjoy doing. And that's what acting is. Yeah. It's like crawling around on the ground, pretending you're a tree or yes. the wind or a, you know, a hawk. <laughs> One of my favorite <laughs> memories um, with being a child again once I started that mm -hmm. acting is being at this retreat where we, that whole day was spent being a kid again. I mean, we had um, water fight, water balloon fights. We had oh, um, watermelon eating contest. We just did things that a kid would do all day. Nothing else. We couldn't be an adult that day. We that did is all wonderful. kid things. And you don't realize how it triggers things and takes your mind to a different place. Right. Uh, and as an actor, that's what we do. And like you said, letting go. Right. Letting you have go. to, on the screen, you have to make a complete fool of yourself. Yes. And do things you wouldn't do in life. So you, beca so you became an educator, working mm -hmm. with kids. High school kids. High school. <laughs> Sometimes they're younger than the little ones. Right, right, right. <laughs> Did you kids. ever find yourself um, bringing in some of that world that you weren't getting into this as an educator? Um, um, what I did as a teacher, one of my strengths is that uh, I've always been very creative. So my lesson plans were always like when I did, for example, the studying the Aztecs. 
oh, maybe I shouldn't say this, <laughs> but I would, I would have the kids come to the front of the room and we would simulate cutting off their heads and taking their <laughs> hearts out. But I would have like a lot of projects like that. And I also uh, love to write. Oh, okay. So example, when we were doing um, Woodrow Wilson's mm. points, I would have them take one of them, make a monologue out of it. Oh, During okay. World War I, we went to the computer lab and I actually had them edit a small film together. Oh, so you did take it in there. Yes. So you never really, it never left you. No. Never <laughs> left you at no. all. And, and that's funny that you say that. One of our other guests a uh, uh, few weeks ago, she mm -hmm. was an educator. We've got a lot of educators on here. Right. We really have. And that was one thing she was saying was about making um, the curriculums fun for the children. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times children say, well, I can't do math or I can't do, I can't do this mm -hmm. so as an educator she made it fun for them to show them that they could do it right and you know what that's what same way it is in acting we see how much fun it is in it and we get into that environment we leave who we leave Kathy or we leave Judith and right. we go into that character's world and, and you know what that's fun for us it is even yeah. if the story is tragic yes it really it is, a, but you're bringing it out. Yeah, you're bringing your own own soul out right, into the character. Right. So you're are you now a retired educator? Yes. Okay. Okay. Well, thank Yay. you for taking care of our children. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you know what I like to say that because you know what mm -hmm. moms and dads aren't the only one that takes care of them it, it takes a village as they say exactly and our educators are a part of that village that mm -hmm. takes care of our children so then now you move into acting mm -hmm. you start going into taking your training which is what you should do right tell us about one of your um most memorable roles starting off um I, my most memorable role, oh, my most memorable role was years ago. I played Cousin Lyman in, um, God, I forget the name of it, Colson McCullers. I forget the name of the place. Oh. But I was, this is not politically correct. I played a hunchback male dwarf. Oh, okay. And that was a really challenging role. I love that. <laughs> And then I... Was that um, film or theater? It's theater. Oh, okay. That's how I started. And then I segued into film because I found I entered acting late in life. You know, uh -huh. I, I don't have a degree in it. Right. I studied when I was older. Uh -huh. And I was auditioning, and I found there's really no roles for me uh -huh. unless I'm, like, in a wheelchair, like, which is fine, uh -huh. drooling and, you know, or a witch or something. So I decided I was going to produce my own films okay, and uh, write my own okay. and produce them. And so Amanda Melby, who was here, she directed my first film. Oh, awesome. Carrie and Angie. Yes. Yeah. So do you feel there's not enough film for women in our uh, uh, individuals in your age group? I find that it's opening up now. Oh, there's okay. so much now. There's so many women actors right. producing and taking control and writing right. material. Right. But when I started you know, like 15 years ago or oh, something. It, it, it was, was a lot different. Right. Yes. And it's great to see the change. You're mm -hmm. starting to see more um, more roles for women, right. first off, and, and the age group. I mean, because think about it. You look at television, commercials. What do you see? You see all kinds of people. All It's so nice. That's right. It is. And there's all kinds of people in our world, so why wouldn't we see them? I know. We were only <laughs> seeing a very limited part yes. of the population. So, yeah, it's so nice. So it's changed, but, I mean, it hasn't gotten there, but it's getting there. It's changing. It is. It is it changing. Is. I also wanted to bring this up to you. I don't know. If, were you part of um, working on getting that tax incentive here in Arizona? I wasn't. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm just putting you in all areas that you weren't. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I know that there's I been a lot of work there. put into that here. Right, and that's so great. Yes. So in, in 15 years in this industry, what's one of the changes that you've seen that's been major here in Arizona? I've. That is a question that is stumping me. What have I seen changed? I... I think there's more filmmakers. Uh, Scottsdale Community College is really graduating excellent people. Yes, ASU now has a program. Yes. And there's more qualified uh, technical people yes. that have stayed in the state. Yeah, I think that's 
excellent because that anybody is. can come in here and make a film, especially if the tax incentive, you know, right, passes. Right. And there's such qualified people here. Right. And and you know we want to keep them. Right. I mean, we don't want them to come here, get trained, and and then fly and to then L.A. Or, or New York us, or yeah. Atlanta. And, and that's what we hear a lot that they come, mm -hmm. um, even the ones that are from Arizona. Because there wasn't they want to enough make a living. Yeah, because there's not enough work here. Or if mm -hmm. it is, it's not something that's major. So right. they're wanting to go to um different areas where they can thrive as an actor. Mm -hmm. And and we can't blame them. No. I mean, no, because, everybody has to make a living, especially yes. it's something they're passionate about. Yes, that is awesome. So Miss Judith, yes. I'd like to ask, and we we've spoken about um uh, you started back acting in um, later years after retiring. What advice would you give to a mature woman that's looking at you and thinking, I want to become an actress? I would say do a lot of student films. Get, get used to being in front of the camera. Get used to the rhythm of the set, the long takes. Um, also, definitely just dive into acting classes. Find a teacher you really like. And yeah. you can also do them on Zoom now. Right. During COVID for two years, I was taking acting classes um, with a woman, I guess I could advertise her, Sharon Chatton <laughs> in Santa Monica. Mm -hmm. And and believe it or not, it was really helpful. Yeah. I also was taking classes uh, with a teacher in New York. Mm -hmm. And there's, if you want to get more into what casting is doing, a one-on-one -on -one New York Mm -hmm. They have excellent, excellent classes with casting directors all over. There's so many. You get There's overwhelmed so on right. social media. Yeah. But at least you're thrown in there. And what was good about my COVID was not good. But the mm -hmm. two-year two -year break, a year-and-a-half break, I could really see what these top casting directors want. Right. They want raw. They want vulnerable. They want mm -hmm. in the moment. Mm -hmm. They want, you know, it's like, okay. I don't know if I can get there, but that's what they're looking for. So it's very eye-opening. Um, I think that's a really good education. And sometimes if you're older, you can definitely, um, they're looking for people of all types. Right. So right. start with a smaller role and just work your I way like in. I like that because, you know, a lot of times people are thinking, I'm too old for this. It's too late for me to start that. That's for young people. And but, Well, not now. Yeah. It used to be, but not now. Yeah, so I love the advice that you gave him. Yeah, and, and that advice, too, can fit for younger people, too. Right. I mean, dive in there and do those things. Mm -hmm. So, Judith, I know you're an actress, but you mentioned that you wrote a couple of films. You're also a screenwriter. Mm -hmm. um, tell us a little bit about your first film you wrote and what that was like. My first film was Carrie and Angie, the one that Amanda directed. And at the time, Wed Pickersgill lived here, and he was an amazing cinematographer. Mm -hmm. The film looks excellent. So what I did is I actually was in a showcase in Amanda's studio, and Carrie and Angie was a short play. So I thought, I, I want to learn about filmmaking. And so I wrote to the author who lived in New York, and she gave us the rights. And so I rewrote, I rewrote the script, and of course I had... Um, a play is very flat. Mm. I mean, it's not flat, but it's very full of exposition. And so you, ha I had to layer it, add different characters, add right. different dimensions to it. And then we found a church in Glendale, a beautiful church. And thankfully, they didn't ask for the script because the script had some language in it wow. that no church would ever want to hear. And we filmed it and Wonderful. really didn't cost very much money. Wonderful. And then it went, um, surprisingly, it went to some festivals. In fact, Amanda went to London with it. Oh, my goodness. I didn't go. I didn't have enough money to go to London. <laughs> I went, I think she, we went I think to she, New York. I think she mentioned that, or that's on her website also. Yeah, Karen and Angie. Yes, yes. So I know that you're also, you have a new film I have that you a just new wrote. One, Tell yes. us a little bit about this. Well, this one's called 42 Seconds. And it is, I like to do different genres. And I've always wanted to do a film about trauma, hmm. about um not really my own trauma, mm -hmm. but that sounds ridiculous. <laughs> I, meant, I meant I wanted not want to do my own story, right. but I wanted to incorporate it into a different story. Oh. So this is a film about three survivors of a mass shooting who return to the diner where it happened six months later, mm -hmm. and they're seeking healing. Oh, okay. So that's what it's about. So 
Um, what I did is I focused on the healing mm -hmm. and the trauma and the survivor. So it's not focusing on the shooter right, right. or the incident, although right. there will be flashbacks. And this film, it's only like 15 minutes of that. But I wrote it like two years ago, and, and um, I was on a Zoom writing group, and th they read it. They loved the first three pages. They told me the rest of it didn't work. Oh. So I put it aside, very sad. It was like, oh, my phone oh. doesn't work. And then I um, took it out, like maybe last year, I took it out again, and I did the research. Mm -hmm. I had to look how to do flashbacks correctly, right. how to transition, how to, um, I further uh, did backstories and some of the characters. Uh -huh. And um, yeah, we're filming July 10th yep. in Superior, Arizona. I found a Miners on Main, an excellent location. Wow. And you are going to be in it. Yes. <laughs> so I'm so excited about yeah. that. Congratulations. And we have um, an amazing cast and crew. Yes. And I, I was going to finance this one myself. But I learned, I don't know if it's inflation. I don't know what happened from my other films. My other films seemed like, oh, let's just do a film. And this one, the budget kept growing and growing. And I, I think mostly insurance costs have gone mm. up. And actually, one of my films, I didn't even have insurance. And I had to get workman's comp. The location price went up. Then we have this excellent camera package. Mm. And we have a, a wonderful cinematographer. And it's mostly the equipment, and also because I decided we're going to do it in Superior because right. the diner is amazing. That now it's why motel did you, cost. Why did you select the um, diner? The, well, I was looking in all over Arizona. This diner is off the main road, so you're not having the traffic noise for sound. Oh, okay. It's also big enough to get the cast and the crew in the diner. Okay. And I forget the name of the film, but Sean Penn, Jennifer Lopez, a U-turn? Oh, was it U-turn? U-turn was shot at this diner. Oh, so the okay. crew had come in, and they actually have some things they did to this diner to even improve it more. Oh, wow. It's really gorgeous. That's and Superior, awesome. we have the road there. We have some scenes that take place outside. It's going to be like 190 degrees, but yeah. it's going to be quiet. And I, awesome. I just couldn't find a diner without the street noise. And also, because it's summer, they're closed like mm -hmm. three days a week. Okay. Well, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we're going to be shooting on uh -huh. Sunday night. The other diners I found, you can't just go in there and shoot right, a film. Right. Especially we have, we don't have real blood, but we have some fake blood. Right. Yeah. Right. So, um, what, you, you spoke about the cast and the crew. Mm -hmm. What was it that uh, attracted? How did you select your director for this? This film? Well, my director is Steve Anderson from Tucson, and he's worked on um, Secret Lives of Teachers. He's also an acting coach. Oh, okay. So if you have an audition or anything, he's excellent. Oh, okay. He's excellent. And he, what can I say? He really likes the script. <laughs> he's like so passionate about the script and the subject matter. So it's like, Yes, and he's also, um, he loves actors, and he, I trust him, you know, I'm going to be on the set, I'm going mm -hmm. to also be acting in it, because I always write myself apart, right. so. And you should. Yeah, and I should. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's an ensemble, but mm -hmm. I always kind of include myself, but he, I, I trust him, and he works really well, like the cinematographer in him. Mm -hmm. It, they're, it's like a bromance, oh, him and the gaffer and the cinematographer, oh, okay. and so they're just so creative. Oh. He's very creative, and um, and he knew about the project when I first wrote it, so oh, okay. that's why I selected him. You know, I want to go back to the, the film group. I just had a question about mm -hmm. that. You said they initially said that the last, the other pages didn't work. No, they didn't work. Okay. What was <laughs> it, um, the purpose of this group? Were they to help you oh, write? I'm so sorry. It's not so much a film. It was a, a screenwriting group. Oh, okay. Perhaps I wasn't clear. Okay. Well, the screenwriting group, what, what, it, what is their purpose? Were they there to help you with your writing? Well, the purpose, like, if you go, I've learned in screenwriting groups, is you go and you they read your material and okay. you're supposed to sit there silently. Oh, okay. And then they give you feedback. The feedback is supposed to help you continue. Oh, okay. And so they were saying I was engaged for three pages. 
and then I dropped out. I I wasn't interested anymore. Oh, okay. Or what I found in my script is was very repetitious. Oh, okay. It was repetitious, and it was kind of telling the same story story over and over and the flashbacks weren't clear there was too much exposition oh, okay. I had to like it's called skeleton uh -huh. I had to, to really and also like in in a script you want to make it move you want to mm -hmm. make it have rhythm mm -hmm. and you want to make the characters um, will, w which will become the actors who will mm -hmm. fill it out want to make them want something or why are they there Okay, so you were and missing points a, of view. I was missing points so of view. So you were missing a lot of that. I was missing a lot, and that happens with every script I write. It's like, oh, this is so great. Well, no, oh. <laughs> it's not. So Judith, it where, will be. <laughs> where can our audience find you? My the audience can find me at. Um, I don't have any place to find me. Forty two seconds dot com. Oh, forty two seconds. Okay, it's <laughs> www forty two seconds dot. Info, I-N-F-O. So www.42seconds.info. Oh, okay. And you're also on Instagram? Oh, I'm on Instagram. Yeah. It's Judith Toby. Toby's my middle name. Okay. So I, I use Toby. Okay. And I'm on Facebook. I think my it's Judith Eisenberg on there. All over the place. All over the place. But I don't have a web page or anything. Okay. Well, so it was sad. a pleasure having you here with us oh, today. Oh, thank you so much. Thank I so appreciate you. it. And we look forward to your new film. 42 seconds, it. yes. <laughs> and thank you for joining us here today at Desert Wood Days, and we'll catch you next time. Today's episode of Desert Wood Days with Kathy Blaze was sponsored by Movie Group. Visit them at dreamnetworkchannel.com.